I believe that everybody has a story, and I'm fascinated to hear them. So come with me as we take a walk down Fascination Street. Hey guys, if you like what I'm doing, click the Amazon banner at the top of the homepage on FascinationStreetPod.com and do all of your shopping through Amazon. Once you click on it and it takes you to Amazon, you can bookmark it or add it to your favorites and you won't have to go to my site each time. It helps me keep the show going and again, thanks for listening. Welcome back, Streetwalkers. This episode is with Jaden Rivera. Jaden is the host of his own podcast called Talk Time Radio and the co-host of a podcast called Endless Ranters, as well as the owner of a company called Exotic Pools in Austin, Texas. In this episode, we talk about his pool company, both of his podcasts, and our mutual affinity for The Adam Carolla Show. We also talk about what made him decide to start not one, but two podcasts. So enjoy, folks. This is multifaceted, self-employed business owner and dual podcast host, Jaden Rivera. Welcome to Fascination Street Podcast, Jaden Rivera. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely my pleasure. So, Jaden, I think that we are not too far away from each other, and it's almost ridiculous that we're doing this over the phone. So tell me where you're at. I'm on the north side of Austin, Texas. So like Georgetown? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm in Austin, but I'm up in an area called the Domain, so it's kind of like, I don't know how familiar you are with Austin. The Domain is a big, giant shopping center, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I get a lot of I get a lot of flack from people that, that aren't familiar with it. Part of it is, but part of it's like upscale apartments or condos or whatever. You know, a lot of it is shopping centers and stuff, but then kind of the other half is you know, a lot of nightlife. I mean, it's kind of like the, I don't know if you're familiar with 6th Street, but it's kind of like the 6th Street of up north. It's called Rock Rose, and that's where I live. So it's a bunch of bars and stuff like that, but there's also some nice, you know, there's a nice community up here of just kind of like, I don't know, young professionals. Not that I'm trying to group myself in with them, but there's a lot of that going on, kind of midtown, uh, uptownish kind of vibe. I like it. But um, yeah, a lot of people seem to think that. It's, it's definitely a concrete jungle, no doubt about that. Well, there are worse groups to endear yourself to than young professionals. Yeah. <laughs> so the domain, there's a couple of places sort of like that here in San Antonio where it's like, you know, residences up top and sort of businesses down below. And if I remember correctly, and I'm pretty sure I do, my son went to culinary school at Le Cordon Bleu at the domain in Austin. Yep. Yep. I live like barely two blocks from that. I walk past it every day. Yeah. It's a cool place. What is it now? I thought it that's what it was. It is um, it is my understanding that Le Cordon Bleu left America and they're only like in Paris and London. Is that not the case? To be honest, I always walk around the back side. I don't ever drive around the front. I know it was here not too long ago. I mean there's definitely I don't know, maybe they changed the name or something, but I still see some chefs in there. Maybe they changed the name. I mean, because they have a really cool like I don't know if you actually went there or if that it was your son. Yeah, my son, he's twenty six Six. <laughs> yeah, this. Uh, I'm sure he m maybe told you about it or showed you pictures. But they have like this really nice big. Oh, I went. You know, kitchen area. Oh, you did go there. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Really you don't. Nice. You don't spend that kind of money and not show up. <laughs> yeah, you gotta. You gotta check it out. Make sure he's not uh, blowing it. I was at the, at so jealous, man. That place was gorgeous. Oh yeah, it's nice. I mean, to tell you the truth, I don't. I I used to. It used to be on my daily walk that I like the daily route that I would walk my dogs. But to tell you the truth, I haven't walked past it in probably a couple months. I've just been busy with other things that I'm doing, and uh, I've been I did I started taking my dogs like on a different route. That's kind of I don't know more scenic, I guess, quote unquote. But uh, I believe it is still there. I believe it's a culinary school. Maybe they changed the name or something, but I can't imagine it would be very easy to turn you know what was a really like high end culinary institute to you know what are they going to turn it into a gas station like <laughs> it'd be really hard to do that so i would imagine it is but i'll uh i'll let you know for sure 
Well, you know, it, so it, he, he graduated. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. This, this was a few years ago. So, mm. you know, maybe there was some issue and, you know, maybe they're back now or something. I don't know. But that's definitely good news that, you know, regardless of what it's called, it's awesome to know that there's still a culinary school there. Because, uh, mm. like I said, that place was gorgeous. Yeah, it's big, too. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, you yeah. were saying, what are they going to turn into a gas station? I was like, a gas manufacturing station, like yeah. a refinery. That place is huge. Yeah, it'd have to be a Bucky's. <laughs> I don't know if they have those where you're uh, I don't know if that's just a Texas thing or, well, or what. Well, I'm not too far out of San Antonio. I'm in Bernie, Texas. And for those around the country who don't know, Bucky's is, well, in my mind, for years, I was like, I, I, well, I'm tired of seeing all these hillbilly assholes wearing these Bucky's T-shirts with this giant fucking buck tooth beaver on it. I mean, isn't that just a glorified gas station? Like, what the hell? And so just out of pure, I don't know, animosity, I refused to go to one ever. And then, oh, yeah. and then I went to one, like my wife, we had, well, we needed gas. And my wife said, hey, pull in here. And I was like, man, fuck that place. And she goes, no, pull in here. <laughs> So we pulled in there, and I can see why everybody loves that place so much. I mean, it seems yeah. weird that they have billboards 100 miles away that say, we have 100 clean toilets, but they do. Yeah, no, it's, it's like the Walmart of, or I don't know, it's like the Costco of convenience stores. It's just crazy. Their food's not too bad either. I mean, you know, for gas station. Well, they their food is absolutely amazing. And, yeah. I mean, you say for a gas station, but uh, I'll put their food up against just about any fast food restaurant in the same style that's out there. I mean, they have some really cool shit. And they have a whole wall oh, of... Yeah. I don't really eat candy anymore because I'm doing Vinny Tortorich's No Sugar, No Grain. But mm. Bucky's has the most amazing candy selection. Like candies you didn't even think they made anymore. Bucky's has them. Mm -hmm. And they have them in bulk. Uh, I love that place. Oh, uh, yeah. How's that? Uh, how's the NSNG diet going for you? Well, I don't call it a diet. It's more of a lifestyle. Um, oh, okay. The biggest change that I made was the first change I made. And that was... You know, I drink about a half a pot of coffee a day or something like that. But Oh, that's it? Yeah. Rookie. Yeah, what a rookie. <laughs> what I used to do was I would put either half and half or milk, and I would put two tablespoons of sugar into each cup. So half a pot of coffee, you know, I'm eating or drinking, you know, a Man, basically a pint yeah. of milk and, you know, a cup of sugar every day. So mm -hmm. the first thing I did was cut all that out, and now I only put heavy cream in. And that was the biggest change, I think. You know, then, of course, the struggles, living in San Antonio where breakfast tacos are the best thing on the planet, that sucks. Mm -hmm. You know, to just eat the insides out of a taco, it's not really the same thing. But after a while, I, like I've been doing it for, I don't know, a little over a year or something like that. And, you know, I've lost 40 pounds and that's cool. But, oh, yeah. Yes, it is cool. But the main thing is that I feel better. You know, I don't feel like a bloated piece of shit all the time. Um, you know, Vinny's <laughs> just a thing. Piece of shit, just, just not bloated. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so a lot of Vinny's sort of preaching is based on the, um, he says, put life into living. Which I think he kind of has backwards. I think it should be put living into life because what he says is like, you know, if you're looking for a shortcut for like a cheeseburger, you're not going to find one that's going to satisfy you like a cheeseburger would. So have a fucking cheeseburger. Just don't have one every day. Yeah. So his kind of thing is sort of, you know, make sure you know what you're doing and what you're going to do to yourself when you do it. And then do the real thing. Like, you know, there's all these weird hacks with cauliflower rice or you know, all this other weird yeah. shit. But, you know, it's never going to compare to the thing that you want it to be. So have the actual thing. Just don't have it all the time. And so that's really why I say it's kind of a lifestyle and not really a diet. But, you know, I, I'm, yeah, that's a good point. I'm pretty happy good way to look it. at it. It makes it easier to not. You know, to not just give up because you fucked up. No, no, no. You fucked up on purpose. You wanted to have that thing. You had that thing. Huh. Now get back to not having those things. Yeah. And, and by being disciplined and, and kind of diligent about, you know, what you take in, you can afford, you know, to indulge a little bit. Like, I think, isn't it Dwayne Johnson goes crazy like every Sunday? Yes, he does. Uh, 
Yeah. Holy shit. I mean, I don't have Instagram or anything like that, but that I hear that he'll just like, I mean, like some, like almost cartoonish, like he'll wrap a donut in a pizza and a burger, you know, and just go to town. I mean, you know, and I I would imagine, especially with that guy's work ethic, I have a theory that he has a clone. Like (laughs) that guy's in everything, you know? You know what I mean? But yeah, I actually want to try that out. I had a, I have an interesting, not that interesting, but I've never really heard anybody else doing this, but I need to cut out sugar or whatever. So I, I try to be mindful of that. But one thing I do is I'll put the sugar in the first cup of coffee in the cream and then I'll drink it and I'll get, you know, maybe quarter to halfway down and then just kind of dilute it with more coffee. So I'm never doing, you know, I'm, I'm not taking in more cream and sugar, but I'm not doing without cream and sugar in in my you know second and third or fourth cups of coffee you know what i mean so just to keep some of that sweetness in there does that make sense yeah so when you say cream do you mean heavy cream or are you talking like half and half or something no am i about to be shamed if i say half and half yeah a little bit <laughs> no no there's, okay. there's no shame so here's the trick so i went i was doing half and half and it wasn't sweet enough you know because i like my coffee sweet it, and it sounds like you do too, at least at the beginning. But when I change to heavy whipping cream, it is sweet enough. Like you don't miss the sugar at all. And so oh, I, good. I would recommend, you know, just give that a try. You know, find a good heavy cream that doesn't have a whole lot of other shit in it. And you'll be surprised once you start looking at the back of things, what's in stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, like the first heavy cream I grabbed, and it was like organic heavy cream, and I turned it over, and it's like heavy cream and hydrogenated oil. And I was like, well, hold on. I just want cream. Arsenic. Yeah, right, arsenic. Yeah. <laughs> so just give it a shot. Just try. Yeah. And so one of the cheats that I did, because, you know, again, like I said, I, li- I liked my coffee sweet. So I put more heavy cream than I would have put half and half. Just yeah. because the sweetness of the heavy cream was was sort of satisfying that that itch, but you know, as time goes by, you know, I I use less and less heavy cream, and the heavy cream does two things: it satisfies that sweetness and that unctuousness, but also the fat in the heavy cream makes you not hungry for a while. So, like, yeah, yeah I drink a half a po- yeah. so yeah, I drink a half a pot of coffee, but then I don't eat lunch until like one or two o'clock. And then I'm not yeah. like I don't I won't eat until like eight at night if I even eat. Sometimes I don't even eat dinner just because I'm not hungry because I had such a late lunch. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. And it, intermittent fasting is becoming a thing now. I mean, it is. I've always kind of <laughs> done it. I just I've only been a once. I only eat once or twice a day. You know, sometimes twice, but usually like once a day. And uh, I think that was the whole thing with the. I don't know if you ever tried the um, the whole MCT oil thing that they were pushing for a while it's actually on it the company that makes it is here in austin you know so i tried it but it's like it doesn't really do much for me so i'm definitely gonna get i mean i'm totally sold on what you just told me about the heavy cream i I might just throw out my half and half like right after we get off the gonna rage throw it out a window (laughs) (laughs) and it lands on a fiat at that dealership at the at the domain Oh, yeah, yeah. That was the first time I saw the new Fiats was I went to go uh, visit my son at culinary school. And I, mm-hmm. they have a little Fiat. I don't know if they still do, but they had a little Fiat dealership in the domain. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, hell, yeah, that looks dope. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think it's still there. It's over on the other side because it's kind of big and it's kind of uh, divided into sex. Like, I, I don't go to the what i would call the west side of the domain very much that's where all the traffic is see i live kind of i strategically placed myself kind of on the outskirts where i have a couple different ways out like you know um I, i'm not gonna i was about to literally start naming like little side streets <laughs> you know um, yeah what's your apartment there. number yeah um and, and, <laughs> and so, but there's there's other ways out like the back instead of having to go through the domain because it can get really congested right but um you know, I, I actually like this area. I mean, it's, you know, all the people are just, just friendly people. I mean, they're all, you know, I'm from Houston and I've lived in bad neighborhoods. Like, nobody cares about anything. They fucking, you know, they treat their lawn like shit. Everything not maintained and, and there's like car rims everywhere. Everybody hates each other. You always got to say you buy like a nice TV or something. And to get it, you know, from the from the car into the house is like a covert operation. You got to like drape it with like a higher SEAL Team Six to help you get it in without getting jacked. I mean, 
you know, so I, I like the area because people are just more respectful. They're more, you know, they're working hard, and, and uh, that's just what I found. <laughs> well, I, I would guess I would call it like an upscale part of town. People treat each other better. They, they're they more respectful, you know. There's not people partying till you know, four in the morning. I mean, it happens from time to time, but, uh, you know, people respect each other more. So, so I like it. You know, that's what I hated about Houston. I don't know if you've ever been there. Are you, are you from Texas? Oh yeah. I was born in San Antonio. I've lived here for almost my whole life. I spent a year and a half in Louisville, Kentucky, but then came right back cause I didn't like it. So yeah, yeah I'm uh, a Texas boy through and through. I've been to Houston a million times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a million too many. I was wondering about that because I listened to a couple of your podcasts, and I one of the ones that I listened to was the first one, or I think it was the first one that you did with the Adam Carolla staff, and you were in their studio. Well, that wasn't the first one, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've interviewed somewhere between 12 and 15 people that are either in the Carolla universe or tangentially related to the Carolla universe. I've recorded three or four of my episodes in their studio, in his studio, which is fucking amazing. So yeah, it wasn't my first one, but it was, oh, okay. it was among, it was probably in the first six months, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it was one of those things where, uh, I don't know how that whole thing works, but it's like it, the episodes are limited to a certain amount or something. And maybe that's what it was. Cause I thought I scrolled to the bottom you know, because I wanted to hear, I was, I was trying to uh, stalk you a little bit and and get, you know, get a little, learn a little bit about you, you know, so I could, I don't know, I felt like it would make for a better conversation if I knew at least a little something about you, but especially this it. part, it, yeah, and I, and I, uh, I, just, I, I have an admiration, like I have mad booking envy. I mean, you've got some crazy high profile guests on your resume, so uh, kudos, man, you're doing a great job. It's like. I'm so, I was like really impressed. I was telling my co-host that, you know, I was like, man, have you seen this guy's podcast feed? The guys that he's had, I mean, you got Adam Carolla, um, you had Vinny on, right? Three times. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Actually, uh, so cool. I had Vinny on the first time and it was such a long and, and involved conversation that I made it a two-parter. And that was, you know, like in person in when I was in LA. And then I had him on to promote the crowdfunding of fat a documentary uh -huh. and that was i think that was this past june or july or something and then i was actually on his podcast fitness confidential probably two months ago or something like that oh yeah i imagine he gave him some sort of testimonial telling him that he yeah it was he calls it the saturday show which is he calls it a, a victory lap and so it's for people to kind of share their stories and the impetus on on me being on that episode was that I had gone to my lung doctor because the first time I went he prescribed me four inhalers and so he took me off one of my inhalers and then you know a couple of months ago I went back and you know I had lost 40 pounds and more importantly I had kept it off for like a almost a year or something like that and my doctor took me off of two more inhalers. So I just have one inhaler now. And I was telling Vinny about that. So that was the reason that he had me on was to talk about how well NSG has done for me. But then also he wanted to highlight my podcast. And, you know, like you said, some of the cool people that I've interviewed, I actually interviewed, do you know, Ron Howard? Uh, the singer? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, of course I know Ron Howard. <laughs> not, per not, not personally. <laughs> well, I'm friends with his brother, Clint Howard who is a star oh, yeah. in his own right. He's that guy's amazing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, gentle. Is it gentle or a, uh, yeah. Gentle Ben. Yeah. yeah gen gentle Ben. Gentle ben. Yeah. He was like friends with a bear or something, right? Best friends. Best friend. Oh, okay. It was like Lassie, but with a bear. Yeah. I'm curious. How did that work? Like, was it one of those things where they would do one shot of the bear and then cut to him and, but they weren't actually in the same room or were they actually oh, interacting? No. No, he was acting with a bear all the time. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Well it's, behaved bear. it's a really fascinating story. I, I interviewed Clint and it was a two parter also. But what I was getting at is I interviewed uh, Ron and Clint's father, Rance Howard, who was an mm -hmm. actor for, I don't know, 60 years or something like that. Yeah. And he was in just everything. People, the stuff you didn't even know he was in, he was in. But I interviewed him at his house. And four months later, he died. So I was the last oh, yeah. long form interview with this man. That was one of the things that Vinny talked about on my episode of his show was, you know, just 
the the people that I've had and like the talent that I have been able to wrangle. And I even interviewed Vinny's longtime girlfriend and she's a Bond girl. What? Oh uh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, she Vinny is. Vinny was pulling it down. Did you ask him about his um uh, episode of Oprah where he was wearing fucking pink jeans? <laughs> Even better than that, you've seen that picture of Vinny with the conch shell, right? Yeah, unfortunately. So, so you listen to the Corolla show, right? Yeah, I'm an avid listener. So I think it was about a year, maybe a little more than a year ago, he won, like, I don't know, the Rotten Tomatoes game or some bullshit. And they presented him with a trophy, which was a dinner plate of him in the conch shell. Yeah, yeah. That was me. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, that was me. I sent that. <laughs> nice. Oh, I love me some Vinny. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, I, just out of curiosity, well, I actually had two questions. One, doesn't Clint Howard make snow globes or something like crazy? Like, as a matter of fact, thing? he does. Why do you know yeah. that? Oh, uh, because he was on the sh- he was on the Adam Carolla show. Like, I booked uh, that. Oh, you booked that? Wow, dude, who are you? All right. <laughs> <You're> fucking- <laughs> International man of mystery. Who am I? No shit. Oh, God. I amaze myself all the time. Yes, I booked that show, and I was supposed to be on that episode of Corolla Show because Clint was going to bring me in. But Adam was shooting a Forza commercial, and so the schedule got pushed up. And so that happened like on a Wednesday, and I landed on a Thursday. So I, I didn't get to show up. But that was the oh, day that, that, that Clint just showed bummer. up like in his in his Grinch His robe pajamas. or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. He was hilarious, I thought. I love that I, guy. I've always loved Quinn Howard. He's so He's awesome. great. But yeah, uh, he actually made me a snow globe. Oh, really? Yeah. So I have a, a window washing business called Squeaky Clean Window Washing, and mm-hmm. he made a snow globe of a window washer. It's a lady window washer in high heels on a ladder looking like a whore. Uh, he calls her Wendy the window washer, and he actually put on there, he made like a little, a little faceplate for it that said Squeaky Clean, and- he made it for me, but he said, you have to come and get it. I'm not going to ship it because it'll break and you can't take it on a plane. So you have to come and get it, but you have to promise me that you're going to drive it back. And so that was the impetus for me to go out to L.A. in the first place and interview all those people with the Corolla show and hang out with Clint and then get my snow globe. So there's uh-huh. only two people that are not Clint that have a snow globe made by Clint. One is his oh, really? brother. Hold them. Well, I guess there's he sell them? no, he doesn't sell them. Well, he yeah. jokes that he'll sell one for, you know, six figures, but no, he doesn't sell okay. them. So actually, I guess there's three. So Ron, well, yeah, Ron has one that he made for Ron. And then Ron's wife has one that he made for her. And then I have one. So I'm the only oh. non Howard that owns uh, a Clint Howard snow globe. Wow. You're in that rarefied Howard family air. I know. <laughs> That's crazy. It That's is crazy, amazing. man. I fucking loved him in because um, he was in Apollo 13, right? Oh, yes, he was. Yeah, he, he has was lots of stories then, about that. Ron Howard directed Backdraft, right? That's correct. Yeah, that's a great movie. But um, the other question was, uh, do you miss bread? More than anything, I miss nachos. Oh, yeah. Like, so here in San Antonio, we have like the best Mexican food on the planet or Tex-Mex or whatever. And you can't go to a Mexican restaurant without them putting their finest salsa and their best tortilla chips in your fucking face. Oh, and so yeah. that is my kryptonite. That's really, really hard. And of course, pizza and a Whataburger. This is a Whataburger state. And Whataburger is my favorite thing on the planet ever. And that's been yeah. really hard. But what I do is I just appreciate it more because I have it more seldom, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Phil Rossi. I'm the creator of the sci-fi horror experience, Crescent, along with Eden, Harvey, and a whole lot of other scary stories. 50 hours of all new podcasts are ready for download on demand, including my new book, The Trance, a gothic cyberpunk detective story. And let me tell you, this book has got fangs. For more info and to get your hands on the free podcasts, visit patreon.com forward slash Phil Rossi. Now turn out the lights and take a deep breath because the story is about to begin. So what's your business? 
you know, my, the name of my business is, is Exotic Pools, but we build this thing. It's called a bio design pool. It's like a bio friendly. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I heard about this. I know where you heard about it. It's where everybody else heard about it. I heard about this on the Adam Carolla show. Yep. I called in. I was actually calling in to promote the, uh, you know, he was putting out his, his first stand up special in theaters. So we built these, uh, there, there's a couple different terms that you could use, like a backyard beach or a beach sculpted pool. And what it is, it's like a private beach. You know, there's no concrete, there's no rebar, there's no stone, there's no tile, and it has all flex plumbing. So if the ground shifts, it doesn't crack because, you know, I've been in the pool repair and construction business for, I don't know, what am I, 13, 14 years, whatever it is. And the ground shifts. And so if you have that rigid plumbing with the rigid deck and, you know, the gunite pool with the plaster, I mean, it cracks and it's a pain in the ass, as you could imagine to dig up the plumbing. So we're launching a uh, bio-friendly pool that also happens to be, you know, it's safer, you know, because it's all soft edges because, you know, there's no concrete or anything like that. And it's basically just liners, like pond liners. You lay them down, you lay the flex plumbing down and a couple other layers of liner, and then you put this really nice, like, sand-colored resin on it so it's like a private beach, you know, and you can shape it. You can build a, a custom beach in your backyard, a private beach, in any shape that you want it, you know, and they, and you can build them in like a week or two, you know, depending on the size. And yeah, they're safer, they're more efficient, they're more bio-friendly. I mean, it's, it's like a no-brainer, you know, basically. But it's funny you remembered that. So I guess you're an avid Adam Carolla fan. I was there from day one, episode one. Oh, um, uh, yeah, wow. Back then, Carolla, when he was on the K or rock or whatever the fuck he was on. It, it wasn't syndicated in San Antonio. So I wasn't listening yeah. to him, but I was listening to this different podcast and he was so yeah. excited because Adam was going to be podcasting. Cause I guess it was like a Friday was his last day. And on his last day, he said, Monday, we're going to start a podcast, whatever the hell that is. And so I was there from day one. So I was able to, to listen for the first time. And I actually interviewed Mike August a couple of yeah. weeks ago. And Mike, I, saw that, yeah. I told him that story and he goes, well, holy shit, you might be download number one. I mean, maybe not, but yeah. you could be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very possible. I came in around, uh, like I mentioned before, because, well, the way that, I mean, we might as well just say it, uh, the way that we connected was an Adam Carolla fan podcast, Endless Ranters. I don't know if you, you listen or not. You're so busy getting all these super, uh, high profile guests. You probably don't have time to listen to anything else, but, you know, I, I figured you were an Adam Carolla fan. Yeah, I mean, I, we've talked about it before, and I, I think I got into Adam somewhere around 2011. Not really sure, though. 10, 11, 12, it's kind of blurry, but, that guy's just so brilliant. He's he's one of my heroes for sure. I mean, just his work ethic and his his overall view and just the way he approaches every situation. He changed my life, you know. I don't know if you had that life-changing experience, but he basically kind of taught me to just work hard and it'll pay off, you know. And it, and it did. And it, and it changed my life. I'm in a a better place, you know, financially, socially, emotionally than I was what, what was that 8 years ago. Completely different. I don't know well, if you had that experience. I did. Yeah. Actually, he sort of has changed my life in several ways. I mean, one of them, obviously, I, I don't think I would have had the nerve or the gumption to start my own podcast if it wasn't for him. And, you know, obviously, since I've been able to interview a lot of his people. And so, I mean, obviously, he's changed my life in that way. But I don't think I would have had the courage to do a podcast were it not for him. But yeah. also... I've noticed in everyday little things he's changed my life. Like if somebody cuts me off on the freeway, it's not because they hate me. They don't fucking know me. They're just trying to get yeah. somewhere, you know, like mm -hmm. just real small things like that where I'm just like, it's sort of a shift of perspective. You know, like I used to get really, really, really like road rage pissed off if somebody cut me off because I'm like, oh, they did that to me. They don't know who I am. Well, no, they really don't know who I am. They don't fucking know me. They're not doing it yeah. because they hate me. They're just doing it because they're trying to get somewhere. So yeah, it's not personal. Right. It's it's just all these little things that he has done, and I'm sure he doesn't know or care, but it's all these little things that he's done that sort of just tweak the way I look at life and the way I look at other people and the way I look at things and, you know, myself. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you, man. That is awesome. 
Yeah, one one of, one of the ones that got me just as far as like everyday life kind of stuff that is really just a a metaphor kind of for the bigger picture, so to speak, was he was talking about how have you ever had like a coffee cup that you finished it you, you know you finish the coffee and then it just kind of ends up on your floorboard and you're like well I should grab that it's just kind of rolling around and then it ends up being two coffee mugs and you're like well those are going to bump into each other I should you know and they're going to crack I, sh- I should probably grab that and it's just and then eventually it does and then you're just like I knew that was going to happen and then you kind of blame the coffee cup in a weird way and kind of the metaphor whatever the analogy that he was making or it was just be diligent and just do something right when you need to do it. Just just do it. And once I started doing that, my whole life changed for the better. You know, I spent a lot of time like placing blame and making excuses. And it's like, no, just do it. And before you know it, you'll be in a far better place, it's just like romantically or just just anything. I mean, just everything improves from that point. And, um, you know, so I, I, I'm seriously considering doing the NSNG thing because it's probably the nutritional equivalent to that kind of mind state that I, you know, like you said, it's a lifestyle, you know, which is, you know, what Adam Carolla's philosophies, I mean, that's, that's pretty much a lifestyle, you know, just work hard and all that. So the NSNG thing, I mean, I want to try it. I mean, I I don't even like bread that much, so I'm not going to miss it. Mashed potatoes is what I would miss. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know if I can do without mashed potatoes. How do you feel about mashed potatoes? I love mashed potatoes, but I, I really kind of only eat mashed potatoes like on Thanksgiving. So like Vinny's thing, uh, he says it's not what you eat from Thanksgiving to New Year's; it's what you eat from New Year's to Thanksgiving that matters. Yeah. Does that make sense? So yeah, like, definitely. So do your thing for the whole year, but then enjoy the fuck out of the holidays because that's what they're for. And so I love me some mashed potatoes and I used to eat them all the time. And there was a time when I wouldn't even eat a meatloaf unless it was sitting on top of mashed potatoes. (laughs) So good. But so you just you you just you're like, I'm done. You're just done with mashed potatoes. See, it's no, it's not. It's not. No, see, but that's the thing. It's not that you're done. It's that you're not going to eat them today. This is how I equate it. Like, okay. this is really kind of fucked up, but like Alcoholics Anonymous, AA, their whole thing is, oh no, I'm, I'm never going to drink again. No, no, no. It's, I'm not going to drink today. And so that's kind of how I bastardize in SNG is like, I'm not going to have mashed potatoes today. I might have them tomorrow. But today I'm not going to have them. And that's kind of how I get through it. Because I, I love me some fucking fries. I love mashed potato. Anything with a potato in it. Oh, man. My favorite yeah. breakfast taco on the planet is a potato and egg taco. And I, I really, really can't have the. Oh, oh, my God. I'm white, dude. Hello. <laughs> that is the white <laughs> live man's. live in San Antonio. Yeah, that's the white oh. person's breakfast taco is a potato and egg. But, oh, good God, I love potato and egg tacos. I always thought there wasn't really... Okay, so let me ask you this. If you could choose between a breakfast taco and just a regular taco, which one would you choose? Well, you're talking about how much you love breakfast tacos, and I'm... I'm, I'm okay, look. How, you, how much do you really love them? Look, you're from yeah. Houston, and you moved to North Austin. You do not understand breakfast taco culture in San Antonio. Great. Okay, you're going to be that guy. Everybody says that. I know. Where they're from. Everybody says that. But the weird fucked up thing is they don't have breakfast tacos in L.A. And you're like, what? No, no. They have breakfast burritos, but they don't have breakfast tacos. And so... Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. A breakfast taco is fucking a godsend if it's made like it has to be a cool place who makes their own tortillas and blah 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 but i would never eat a regular taco again if i could eat breakfast tacos every day really yep and i don't even care like in that specific scenario you could give me any breakfast taco over a taco and i don't care my obvious favorite is potato and egg but it doesn't matter it could be bacon and egg chorizo and egg country sausage and egg bean and cheese i do not care i love breakfast tacos i learned how to drive while eating a breakfast taco and putting salsa on it and i can like like, every bite oh (laughs) Oh, and my wife is crazy she's like no no i'm a purist i don't need these breakfast tacos are so good i don't need any salsa i'm like you're crazy (laughs) yeah i'm a cayenne pepper hot sauce kind of guy i don't prefer yeah, I prefer Louisiana cayenne. There's nothing like a good uh, Louisiana hot sauce. 
kind of vinegary. So the breakfast tacos that you eat, it has to be corn tortilla. And what? Egg. Hell no. No. Well, you can't eat flour, right? I just don't eat breakfast tacos, bro. Oh, you don't eat breakfast tacos at all. No, that's the one thing that kills me the most. Uh, also, oh, was, I thought it, you were saying you just. I thought you were saying that it was because you can't eat the potato one. No, that, because you. No, no, no. You can't eat corn either because corn oh, is. Corn? No, nah, you can't eat like corn. Otherwise, corn chips would be awesome. But no, you can't eat corn. Oh yeah. That's so right. corn is like all sugar when it breaks down into your system. Like the he calls it the glycemic index or some bullshit like that. But it's like how your system breaks down the food. It turns it into sugar. And so with corn, it has a high sugar glycemic index or whatever. And so it converts yeah. to mostly sugar in your system. So when I do have a breakfast taco, I'll order like three of them and then I'll eat the insides out of two of them. And then I'll just eat the last one like like I'm a crazy person. <laughs> okay, well, why wouldn't you just get eggs and bacon and just pour salt no, no, no. on that? Uh, I, I do that all the time also, but this this particular place, they're voted best breakfast taco in Texas all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, hey, go to exoticpoolsatx.com and take a look at what we got. Maybe if you want to build a pool, I'll come there and you know I can try these uh, breakfast tacos that you're talking about. I do like a breakfast taco, but if I had to choose, I would pick a regular taco, like a good beef taco. Oh, man, this is great. But, yeah, I don't know if I could give up corn tortillas. I know you're looking at you're judging me right now like I'm weak. I'm telling you, dude, there's no judging. I am, though. There's no judging. And so instead of judging, what I just think to myself is he doesn't understand what I'm saying. You don't give them up. Yeah. You just give them up. All the time. Whenever you're going to have them, have them. Just don't have them all the time. So, Jaden, let's talk about your podcast. First, I want you to tell me about your Endless Ranters podcast. Who are the hosts and what made you decide to start this podcast? It's an Adam Carolla fan podcast because there's a group on Facebook. It's the, the Adam Carolla Show fan group. And we call ourselves Ace Holes. I don't know if you are you in that group. I'm in, you... I'm in like eight Adam Carolla fan groups. Okay, well, this is the best one, I think. But uh, but yes, I am yeah. in the ace holes. Oh, okay, uh, I guess you don't interact too much, or else I would probably because there's a it's a pretty tight knit community. But uh, you know, a lot of us interact, and a lot of people over the years have become friends. And it was actually somebody else's idea. They asked me if I wanted to host it because they knew I had a podcast. Like I hosted my own podcast, so uh, me and this guy uh, Chris, my my co host, great guy, he's hilarious. We just have people, uh, different Adam Carolla fans call in every week. Uh, we usually do it twice a week. And they just kind of talk about how they got into Adam Carolla, you know, what it was about him and, and all this. And we kind of hear their story. Similar to what you It kind of turns into something similar to what you do and just kind of hearing somebody's stories. And a lot of the times, I mean, like you probably figured out, like people surprise you you know somebody who you think is just kind of just regular guy and they they end up having a really fascinating story and and some, a lot of the times they're hilarious and uh you know we'll talk about tool tunes and stuff like that and a lot of times the guests end up singing but yeah i mean we just have different fans call in they kind of tell their story and how they came across adam carolla and it usually involves evolves into all kinds of other shenanigans they tell funny stories and, and stuff like that and uh you know, we talk about porn categories because that's something that's been coming up on the Adam Carolla show and just a lot of the same questions, but a lot of the times we it ends up every episode is different. I mean, there's a lot of characters out there. So that podcast has been going for how long would you say? I think we started like, I think it was like December 28th. So only, you know, a few months. It's only been a few months, but you have what, like 19 episodes or something? Yeah, yeah, we're about to do our 20th and, you know, it's quickly kind of turning into a fun thing that the, you know, the listeners are, are really enjoying it, you know, and, uh, makes for a lot of interesting discussion to say the least, you know, so it's a fun thing. Me and Chris definitely enjoy it. You know, there's nothing quite like a great conversation. I mean, it's, it's a shame that most of the best conversations that I had were not only not being recorded, but we're, we were probably, you know, drunk or something. So I barely remember them. But in the moment, it's one of the best kind of like interactions you can have with somebody. And it's like a best way to get to know somebody is just have a long form conversation with them. But my other podcast, it's called Talk Time Radio. Like I said, it's talk radio satire. I do a bunch of voices 
I'll fuck with people when they call in, you know, I'll just be like, see, see this man, you know, he trying to tell me about his uh, fascination street. I forgot what it was called, but uh, this man tried to install my idea. You know, and I'll, I'll just, I'll fuck with people like that. It's, just, it's basically talk radio where nobody gets along, everybody's rude, everybody cuts each other off, everybody forgets each other's names, you know, and they say a bunch of ridiculous shit, and I'll have callers from time to time and just, like, fuck with them, but I can't promote this to family. I say a bunch of terrible things. They would hate me <laughs> and disown me, you know. It's a tough sell, for sure. feel comforted that your podcast is at least marketable, where mine is, like, people that were close to me heard it, you know, half the shit they get said is, like, not necessarily shit I believe. It's just whatever gets the, the caller riled up. So I'll say all kinds of crazy shit, but, you know, burns a lot of bridges, but it is what it is. I sacrifice it for the art of podcasting. It definitely is what it is. And also, it definitely is an art. So, have you been sued yet by Phil Hendry? No, because, first of all, mine is different in a lot of different ways. I layer the vocal tracks to where he'll hop back and forth. It's, it's, it is similar. I, you know, I, I'll admit it is similar to Phil Hendry. But I got the idea way before I even knew about Phil Hendry. You know, I know it's a tough sell, uh, but... David Lee Roth actually had like a mock radio show back in the day. I don't remember what it's called or where I heard it or when it was, but I do know that it existed. I even had this idea before that because I was never really into talk radio growing up. I don't know about you. Who the fuck is a kid and into talk radio? (laughs) Nobody. uh, Well, I'm sure there's a nerd out there. I mean, Loveline, maybe. After you're told to turn the lights out, it's time to go to bed, and then you put on your headphones, pretend like you're going to sleep, and listen to Loveline. But other than that, no fucking kid, except for Alex P. Keaton, is listening to talk radio. Yeah, I was never into talk radio, and I just had the idea one day. I was just like, well, I I wish there was like like a rock star type talk radio to where it's like people are loud people are offensive people you know i mean i'll say anything and everything i mean it's almost therapeutic because what my show is is there's no such thing as boundaries you know a lot of shows like in a world you know i don't know if you get frustrated with this but it seems like we're in a world where everybody's just constantly just walking on eggshells it's nobody wants to say the wrong thing everything's pc is everybody's afraid of being you know, blacklisted and all that. What what talk time radio is, is the backlash to that. And to what talk time radio is, is, oh, that's the line. I'm going to, not only am I going to cross the line, I'm going to pick that line up and just butt fuck it in front of its parents. I mean, it's anything goes, you know, and it's it's therapeutic to just know that I have that outlet and nobody's telling me what to do. I can say whatever I want, whenever I want. It's very explicit. Yes, I, I will admit, um, doesn't do me any favors, like I said, in my social life. I've burned... People have just, like, stopped talking to me <laughs> because of shit that I've said on my podcast, but fuck them, you know? I mean, if you're if you're that easily offended, I, just, I don't really want you in my life, you know? It's supposed to be funny. It's make-believe. But, yeah, I just... I had the idea a long time ago. I was like, man, I wish there was a talk radio show where they were like... They just, like, talk shit to each other or something. It's like, talk radio can just be kind of boring and bland. Even now, like, some shows, I'm just like... It's always so slow, and she's like, oh, well, this is Carl calling in today. Um, hi, Carl. Hi. Thanks for having me on the show. You know, and it's just like, I want it to be live. You know, I want there to be some energy. You know, I want to hear people talking shit. You know, like, I'll just like, I'll fight you, man. You know, like, so that's where the idea started. And uh, like I said, I heard the David Lee Roth. I was like, oh, that guy's kind of doing something similar to what I want to do. Then I came across Phil Henry, who, for anybody that doesn't know, he is the I will never, ever even put myself anywhere near him. He's brilliant. He does his stuff live, though, and the way that mine is different is when when Phil Henry does his, he's he's either talking into the studio mic or talking into the phone mic. Studio mic, phone mic. And he sells it really well, but my thing was always like, it'd be cool if they interrupted each other so it made it more realistic. So what I'll do is I'll do one take like that. I'll do a one run-through where I'm going back and forth. And then I'll do a second run through where I'll do like little stutter, like interruptions to, you know, to where they overlap a little bit, you know, because even the most polite conversationalist, you know, the way regular conversation goes, the, you'll interrupt a little bit or you'll give a little while the other person's talking, you'll be like, mm-hmm, you know, and so I'll go like another run through. So that's what separates it, I think. I, I don't, does that make sense? 
Absolutely. Yeah, it just makes it, it gives it that, that realistic touch, you know, and I do like impersonations like Christopher Walken and John Travolta and a bunch of different, you know, voices and stuff. God calls in sometimes. And... Yeah, I mean, I have like a voice, tra- uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks, you know, I have a voice transformer that I'll do and, uh, you know, I just fuck with people in different voices. But me, the host, I always get to play innocent, you know, and be like, hey, man, why would you say that, you know, when it's really me, you know. So anyway, not to plug that too much. <laughs> yeah, people, I think people would enjoy it. I get a lot of good feedback, but I don't know if you heard any of it. I'm going to have, the I'm we, gonna we have to be something. honest. Yeah, I, I was in the middle of doing something today, working on a project, and I, I did not have a chance to check it out. But I am going to check it out. I swear. I promise. I am. And um, Oh, yeah, no. But for me personally, I don't make jokes to make other people laugh. I make them for myself. Uh, have you ever thought about pitching yours to a network, or maybe it's on a network? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that whole thing works. I have pitched mine to not only Adam Carolla <laughs> to get. I just want Carolla Digital. I want that name behind me. Um, yeah. But I've also pitched myself to Podcast One, and uh, nobody cares. So. <laughs> yeah, you got It's hard to get in. I mean, I actually pitched mine. Uh, you know, Talk Time Radio, the Talk Radio satire one. I know that nobody's going to want, you know, it's hard to get advertisers for a show where you say all kinds of terrible things. I mean, uh, you know, I'm not a racist. I'm not a homophobe. I'm not a uh, massage, you know, I'm not whatever. But, you know, just when you're going off the top, like shit gets like fucked up, things get said. And, you know, unfortunately, that's part of the show, you know, but uh, I knew nobody's trying to have anything to do with my show. But I tried to pitch it to Westwood One and serious and uh it got spiked like a volleyball <laughs> nobody's tried to have anything to do with my show but i think yours is palatable i mean totally you know i mean because there's other networks there's like there's all things comedy which i don't know if you consider i know you find yourself amusing and everything <laughs> but, but i don't know if you consider it comedy i don't know if you i don't know what genre like you would consider this i mean if it was on the radio it'd be talk radio right Sure, why not? I, it's really hard because when they make you pick a they make you pick a genre, it's like they they make you pick a color. Okay, so what's your favorite color? Is it black or green? Well, it's neither one of those. So, is there other choices? Hmm. No, there's not. You have to pick one of those. I'm like, well, I mean, I guess I'm gonna have to pick these categories because. Let me guess. It would be kind of. I would say it'd be under the business category, maybe just based on your been a while. I don't know what all categories they give you. Mine is very obviously comedy. You know, I mean, it's talk radio satire, but uh, yeah, I guess this, I mean, granted, I've only listened to a couple episodes, but just based on your past guests, I, I would say like an entrepreneurial type genre type thing. Business. Interesting. Based on that response, I just deleted this entire interview. Just kidding. So I oh this one I thought you were about to tell me about one you deleted. No, this one right here. Oh, okay, yeah. Bye, everybody. I <laughs> so I um I consider myself comedy because I try to really have a good time with the guests, but also I try I, I feel like it's entertainment because a lot of my guests are in the entertainment business, and so I I just sort of kind of put both of those. You know, I, I was just, I didn't, I didn't know, because that's why I said, I was like, I've only listened to a couple episodes, so I didn't know if you considered it comedy or whatever, because the one that I listened to, uh, I listened to the one with Adam and then the one with the lackeys, and, you know, they were just so different, but I didn't know what you kind of considered yourself. Obviously, like I said, you find yourself amusing. I find you amusing as well, but I didn't know if, if you put yourself into that genre yeah i wish amusing was a category because <laughs> amusing is like one step yeah. down from comedy i think and i think amusing would be a great category but it just isn't it's exciting to know that there's other people out there doing what i'm doing you know so i'm I, you know i subscribe to yours and i'm gonna i'm gonna try that other guy out the bar star yeah it's cool there's a lot of good content out there and it's you know w- there's no money in in podcasting at least the level that i a lot of people are on. I mean, they're doing it for the love of the art form, and and that's cool. It's like it's badass, and that's why I was like super psyched when I when I came across your show. It's like there's a guy out there that's like ambitious, like it's admirable, you know. I mean, regardless of if I'm you know doing mine, I mean just 
even if I wasn't, it's like, uh, just mad props, man. It's like, you're killing it. <laughs> but it's cool that, you know, there's, there's people out there that, that are willing to, uh, cause I, like I said, I mean, for a long time, I just had so many, what I would call, you know, po- quote unquote popular podcasts that took up all my time. So it was like, I didn't have time for the little guy, you know, like an asshole. Like I felt like I just, I don't have time to listen to all these. I mean, cause it's kind of hard to, there's so many podcasts out there. I mean, it's, it would take forever to just sit through it all and, and figure out what's good and what's not. You know, my advice to anybody that's, that's looking for something new to listen to, it's not as daunting of a kind of task as it may seem to be. It's like, you can kind of know within the first little bit whether you're going to like it or not. It's like, give it a try. And, 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 you know, and another thing is you, you'll, you'll be surprised at what, at how much good content there actually is out, out there. So it's, it's a cool world to be a part of, for sure. Well, it is very cool, and I love being a part of it. And I'm glad you're a part of it, too. You know, not to toot my own horn again, but, like, you know, with my show, it's, like, it's it's original. You know, it's all, it's all, um, it's like a whole different universe. It's, like, it just, there's a storyline. It's all make-believe, you know. It's just, and it, it's fun because it's original. So, Jaden Rivera, can you tell us where people can find you on social media? Uh, you know, I don't do Instagram, I don't do Twitter, I don't do like, uh, Snapchat or anything like that. Uh, Jaden Rivera, uh, I guess my name's gonna be on there for the spelling. Uh, Talk Time Radio is my main podcast, uh, Endless Ranters, Curious FM is my music project, and, uh, yeah, Exotic Pools is my pool company, so. I have emails and shit associated with that. You can find it out there. But yeah, I, re- I really appreciate it, man. I, I this this is this is fun. Yeah, thank thank you so much for having me on. Can you hit the Exotic Pools ATX website one more time for me? Yeah, exoticpoolsatx.com. And there's a bunch of information about the the product and the materials and the and the process that goes into into building these uh, bio friendly backyard beaches. So yeah, exoticpoolsatx.com. We'll go all over Texas to build them, at least for right now, you know, while we're, uh, you know, building up the market. So, um, yeah, check it out. Hit, uh, shoot me an email and we'll, we'll talk. Fantastic. Real quick, can I ask why you're not on social media? Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm old school. I still have a landline and uh, fuck, I still use like pen and paper and shit and dry erase boards. I, I just, it's too much for me to keep up with. But yeah, I mean, Hey, uh, if there's one person I'm going to take advice from about exposure, it's definitely you. <laughs> I mean, shit. But yeah, I do. I mean, well, technically, Talk Time Radio has a Twitter, but I don't, I just don't use it. Twitter confuses me. Instagram, those all confuse me. I'm just not, I'm not a social media guy, I guess. Well, that makes sense. I'm going to need you to explain what is a landline and also what is pen and or paper. Yeah, I well, I have to explain it to chicks I date all the time, so I got it down. <laughs> all right, uh, Jaden Rivera, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us on Fascination Street and let us get to know you a little bit better. And you know, if if you need anything or if you have questions or whatever, dude, uh, just give me a call, man. You have my number. Let's hang out. The next time you come down here, or the next time I go up there, let's have a beer and we'll just shoot the shit. Hell yeah, man. I would love it. It was a pleasure being on. Thank you once again. All right. Rock on. Thank you so much, Jaden. You take it easy. Yes, sir. You too. All right. Bye. Hey guys, this is Steve Owens from Fascination Street Podcast here with a very important message. I'm awesome. I bet you thought I was going to say something else, but nope. What's important here is that I am awesome. I started this show because I truly believe that everybody has a story and I'm fascinated to hear those stories. In the short time I've been doing this show, I've interviewed actors, directors, writers, inventors, podcasters, musicians, pro athletes, Olympic athletes, actual war heroes, even a Bond girl and a luthier, whatever the hell that is, and of course, regular people. From people who wanted to be stars but never gave it a real try, to big company CEOs and people who got to meet their favorite president. I love getting to meet and speak with people who have a story to tell. I feel like everyone does, and it's my job to get them to tell it. You never know who my next guest will be. An Academy Award winning actor, a platinum selling musician, or your own mother-in-law. But one thing is for certain, you will be fascinated by their story. So come take a walk with me down Fascination Street. 
You can find Fascination Street Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and of course, FascinationStreetPod.com. Opening music is the song Magnolia from the 2014 album In Transigence. Used with permission from Douglas Miles Clark. Closing music is Apollo from the 2001 album Into the Known by the band Sapphire. Thanks for hanging out with us and getting to know a little bit about our guest. We'll see you next time on Fascination Street.